Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and today we are going to be going over the Moon Gem quest that basically ending Sunday night. <laughs> I'm sorry that this video came out uh, kind of late, so this episode ended up being pushed back a little bit, uh, where it basically came out today. So I apologize about that, but at the very least, better late than never, I guess, right? So, but at the very least, I spent quite a while testing out various different kinds of setups uh, to to beat this guy because <laughs> I will say right now he is not kind to free to play players what a absolute at all like whatsoever like this guy Jesus Christ like I I've made various kinds of notes I always try to make I try, always try to test out various different kinds of setups whatsoever just to see what works uh, to so that way I can relate to you guys. So unfortunately, he does require very specific type of strategies and setups in order to beat him. I tried to do as much as I could possible to help alleviate not needing specific strategies for uh, this boss, but unfortunately, that ends up not being the case. So uh, I'm just gonna use my Fenrir for right now just so I can uh, show you guys uh, the Assault Dragon's patterns and whatnot that you need to be aware of. When you... Now, don't worry that you don't have this setup right now. I'm just using this setup purely to like show you guys uh, the patterns and what to look out for when you're fighting the Assault Dragon, okay? Um, if you're not already aware of them. All right. So obviously when you go across, so obviously when you come across the Assault Dragon, uh, he has, oops, ah, all right, he has, no, oh, wrong buttons, he has over 5,000 bars of HP, which is already <laughs> staggering enough, um, but on top of that, he has 20 special attack hit counters, and he's level 2,000, all right, I do, honestly don't know how to describe this, but there's multiple different problems when it comes, that you come across when you're trying to fight this guy, um, and Honestly, what I would probably say, it's the 20 counters alone that ends up being the main hassle to deal with when it comes to fighting this boss. That and one of his moves. He basically has two moves, so we're just going to go through this turn so you guys can see it. Ugh. But yeah, like, essentially when I came across, when I was trying to fight this guy, um, I tried as much as possible to not use the Warrior of Light and to avoid using VIP medals as much as possible. Because I know uh, people who don't play VIP or people who don't get high school challenge may not necessarily be able to, you know, use these strategies or whatnot. So I tried as much as possible when testing out various kinds of strategies and I, and I did various ones like I tried turtle strategies, I tried a mixture of turtle and normal damage strategies and whatnot. Um, so I, so I tried various things out. So as you can see right here, he did a fire breathing attack. Just so you know right now, the fire breathing attack will always kill you 100% no matter what, okay? It is just completely unavoidable. And uh, basically what I found out, I found out two things about this, okay? He does the fire breathing attack three times. Uh, this, this noise is getting a little annoying, so I'm gonna actually exit this. Alright, so basically, he that fire breathing attack you, you guys just saw, he does the fire breathing attack three times, and he actually does it in a predictable pattern. Uh, the pattern, the pattern being that he does it on every first, fifth, and eleventh turn, okay? Uh, all the other turns that he doesn't do the fire breathing attack, he does that like bomb rush attack. Basically, what I'm trying to say by that is that you have until your eleventh turn, assuming that you have a second chance skill, to be able to proc on your setup, and you also have your pets, uh, your pet level high enough to get the pet, uh, the second chance skill. Uh, this skill right here, the HP recovery one, as long as you have this and a second chance skill on your setup, that will basically last you until turn 11, um, by which point, like, you just won't be able to continue whatsoever at all. The main thing when it comes to fighting against the Salt Dragon is trying to figure out how can I kill him before turn 11. That ends up being kind of the main struggle. So obviously you guys saw the 20 turn counters that he has. So that is an obvious problem as to like, 
what do you have to try to avoid when you're trying to beat him before turn 11, okay? Uh, and of course, we have the fire breathing attack that happens every 1st, 5th, and 11th turn. Um, but one thing you guys may have not known is that whenever he does his bomb rush attack, his PSM strength actually raises each turn, all right? So even though, even if you're running a tank strut up, or you have like one tank metal or whatnot, uh, he can still kill you if your defense isn't high enough, uh, or you're not reducing his strength low enough, uh, or you don't have enough de uh, defense boost skills attached to that, like a mixture, a variety of things. It depends on a variety of things. But essentially, just keep in mind that his PSM strength does rise every single time he does that bomb rush attack. Okay. So when it comes to taking these things into consideration, um, I tried various different kinds of setups. Um, the first one that I was curious about was whether or not a pure, a pure 100% turtle strategy would work. So this is my complete 100% turtle strategy setup that I have right here. Okay. Don't, don't worry about whether or not you can recreate this setup because it doesn't work. I'm just simply showing you guys that turtles, the, a pure turtle strategy will not work. Even when it's maxed out, it just will not work. Okay, so I'm just showing that to you guys. So essentially, just from overall for my setup, I'm getting plus 7 general defense buff, plus 7 PSM defense buff, um, and I'm giving my opponent a minus 7 general strength debuff. Okay, those are the three things I'm giving him. And I have Kyrie, who helps just, who just kind of helps everyone along do extra little bit of amount of damage and whatnot. All right. So this is the setup I'm, I'm going in with, and I'm just kind of, kind of, I'm kind of, kind of like fast forward the battle for you guys, just so you can see uh, what happens and whatnot, that it doesn't end up working. But essentially, I ended up trying out. Come on, <laughs> I ended up trying out this setup uh, just out of curiosity, because the main thing I wanted to see was whether or not I could survive that fire breathing attack. And long story short, I cannot. And I'm gonna just quickly. Uh, fast forward the battle for you, for you so you guys can see it. So this is going to be the first turn. The first turn is obviously we're just going to die because, I mean, we don't have enough bots and whatnot. Uh, so that's the main thing. I also forgot to mention as well that my Chicken Little also has de uh, Defense Boost 3 Max, which is actually relevant, and my HBO has Defense Boost 4. All right. So I'm literally having, I'm literally maxing out my defense as much as possible that's currently available in the game and as you guys see it will not end up it will end up not being enough um, all right so like i said the fire breathing attack will kill you first turn that's just gonna happen and uh before i speed up the the video i want to show you guys how much damage we actually take after the second turn which is when like the extraness of the hpo actually kicks in and whatnot so now this is the second turn, so now we should have max everything that I stated before. Alright, now take a look at how much damage I get dealt. It is like nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay? I just took him, but like, what up, bruh? You got nothing on me. <laughs> Alright, so now here, this is when I'm gonna speed up uh, the video, just so you guys can see that I'm not gonna survive the fire breathing attack. Alright, so as you guys can see right there, I did not survive the attack. Despite all the buffs and debuffs I've been applying, I I still I still died. <laughs> Horrifically. Alright. Um, one thing I also kind of want to sh show here too is that oh, no it didn't show it. If you take if you take a look over here, alright, he has you'll notice that he has his PSM strength raised, alright, up to like six set and whatnot depending on how long it goes. Um, and that's what I was mentioning before, that every time he does that bomb rush attack, he increases his PSM strength every single time. Um, but now we know that it doesn't work, okay? And uh, he's still over 4,000 HP, 
or of bars of HP, I should say. Um, so the turtle strategy is not going to work because the whole point of the turtle strategy is to basically whittle him down little by little. Even if it takes a thousand turns, you can just leave your phone on for like two hours and let him battle uh, and eventually kill him. But uh, since we have to beat him by turn 11, its turtle strategy is just not going to work. Um, so we can abandon this strategy. Now, one thing... Uh, now, I should say that just because a, a complete turtle strategy doesn't work doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily mean that we can't take parts of the turtle strategy and apply it to our overall strategy. Um, and actually, one of the main metals that I'm going to end up going to be using, uh, which unfortunately is kind of required uh, for all of these setups, is going to be the the HD Zexion over here. Pretty much, if you have HD, if you don't have HD Zexion, you pretty much you like pretty much cannot beat this boss, <laughs> or it's gonna, it's going to be near impossible to do so. Um, HD Zexion is pretty much the key to almost all of my setups, unfortunately. So other than that, I'm going to go and show you guys uh, some of the setups that did work for me uh, when it comes for fighting this boss. I'm going to start off by pointing out the obvious one. The obvious one being my Fenrir. I hope that just by looking at this, you can kind of understand why. We're just going for pure damage metals, and it's only one opponent. So yeah, we're just going our strongest damage metals whatsoever. Um, the Assault Dragon is a speed type flying dude. So having power type metals that also have uh, the aerial enemy defense trait, if possible, uh, ends up being ideal. So of course, that's basically what my Fenrir is. It's just pure power. Um, some of them have aerial defense uh, trait. Um, if it doesn't, that's okay. Um, but obviously the main damage metal here is going to be my Warrior of Light that I have right there in the fifth slot. Um, and it's being copied two more times, so I'm essentially using Warrior of Light three times in a row. Um, so it's very obvious why the Fenrir works, okay? But, of course, after stating that, um, I wouldn't be making this video if everyone had the Warrior of Light. <laughs> so, uh, I tried to figure out what type of different ways I could go about beating the Salt Dragon without the Warrior of Light. And unfortunately, I've only had three strategies work. Or, th yeah, three setups work, I should say. Um, that worked against the Assault Track. One of them was this Fenrir setup that I have right here. Another one was a Moogle of Glory setup that I had. Um, but unfortunately, it does require the Warrior of Light. Which ends up being like, well, alright. Alright, so this is the setup that ended up using on the Mogul Glory to beat the Assault Dragon. And it was, I can say right now, it was really hard trying to stray away from certain metals. Um, like I said before, I tried to stay away from VIP and high score challenge medals as much as possible. But unfortunately, um, the way I found it, it's it's almost, it's, it's basically impossible. <laughs> you basically have to use a VIP of some sort or high score challenge medal of some sort. One of the main metals I tried utilizing, utilizing as much as possible was my Flash right here. Uh, if you don't have Flash already, I recommend getting him. Because uh, he could potentially be useful in the future, especially if you don't have metals like Chicken Little or uh, other metals like Lady Tremaine and Daughters. I would recommend farming Flash as much as possible until you get an extra attack trait on him because that's going to be what benefits him most. Um, I figured it would be a good replacement uh, for Chicken Little, or at least like like an alternative replacement for Chicken Little. Now stating that, there's some things I want to state about. There's certain types of metals that I tried incorporating when beating this boss, okay? The first one being uh, Dispel Metals, okay? Because of the fact, like I mentioned before, every time he does the Bomb Rush attack, he increases his PSM strength. So, one of my thoughts was, well, if I could still have a kind of turtley strategy while dispelling his PSM strength buffs, Maybe I can, maybe I can survive. Essentially, Dispel Metals didn't end up working out the way I was hoping to. Um, which kind of sucks, because out of all of the Spell Metals, I was trying to use Key Art number 12 as much as possible, because he fits both the Turtle role of providing the same benefits that HBO does, on top of being a Dispel Metal. But that ended up conflicting with metals like HD Zexion and Chicken Little and whatnot. Mostly HD Zexion, though. Honestly, the, the, be the metals that you basically need in order to beat this boss 
are going to be Chicken Little, HG Zexion, uh, FFRK Warrior of Light, or FFRK Terra. You possibly could get away using King Triton as well, um, but you would need a fully guilted, maxed out guilt uh, King Triton in order for that to work. Something else that you have to have in your setup in order for it to work too. Basically, you have to have the skill Defense Boost 3 Max on one of your medals in order to stay alive. Because even though HT Zexion gives you a uh, defense boost, it ends up not being enough. Uh, it just ends up not being enough because of the fact that, well, because of the fact you're not using the spell medals anymore to get rid of the uh, PSM strength buff that the opponent is applying, you basically need enough defense in order to survive his bomb attacks even with his buffs, okay? And unfortunately, just HD Zexion alone, even when you use him like three times, isn't enough to survive uh, his attacks once he reaches like his peak of buffs. So you basically need a defense skill on top of that um, that can consistently get activated every single time. And that's why we need defense boost three max in order to work with this. Um, and that's basically why this setup works, even though I'm using Flash with extra attack, because of the fact that he is providing that defense boost max skill for me. Now, I will state that depending on your setup, because everyone has like different traits and stuff for their medals, so they could possibly get away with a little bit more than I can. Uh, because of the fact that you're, you have, you're going to be using medals that have extra attack, the extra attack ends up hurting you. Because if you don't have a way to give back counters to the assault dragon to make up for the fact you have extra attack, um, you're actually going to die pretty quickly way before the 11th turn and that ends up being a problem because that's just shortening your time span and as of right now the only setup that i found that works on the assault dragon that does not use the warrior of light in case you didn't have it so let's say you're a vip player and you didn't get the warrior of light if you don't have warrior light it's okay if you have a setup similar to this you're still in good terms okay um, this is my setup that also worked on the Diamond Dust. Diamond Dust is only level 25, by the way. Um, but I had HD Shion, nothing special about her. I have Kingdom Hearts 2 Namine, nothing special about her. Uh, no extra attack. When I say nothing special, I mean they don't have extra attack. Okay. She doesn't have extra attack. Xehanor EX does not have extra attack. That's also a VIP medal, which kind of sucks for a lot of you. Okay. My HD Vanitas has extra attack. Uh, Actually, HD Zexion does not have extra attack, and Chicken Little has extra, extra attack. So out of all of my medals on the setup, only two medals have extra attack. That's my Chicken Little and my HD Zexion. I should also say my Chicken Little has the Defense Boost 3 Max skill. Like I mentioned before, is one of the requirements. Out of all your setups, almost every single one of your setups basically has to have the Defense Boost 3 Max in order to like survive through it. That's it for today's episode, guys. I, I tried my best <laughs> to try to create as lenient of a setup and strategy as possible for you guys to be able to work with. But unfortunately, from what I found, it just it's just like it's just not possible to have to use very specific types of strategies or very specific metals. So just a quick recap. You pretty much have to have HD Zexion if you're not using a pure power like Fenrir type setup that I showed before. And defense boost 3 max is necessary as well. And if you happen to have chicken little, even better. I should also probably state that you need plus 6 upright or reverse buffs too in order to get through it. I didn't mention that earlier in the video, but better late than never. <laughs> you need to have that too or else you're not going to be doing enough damage. But other than that, that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that helps whatsoever. Again, I'm sorry. I know like it only helps out a few of you, but... It's, at the very least, it helps some people out. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload videos like this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.